Jesus said, blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger, you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich. You have received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed. You will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh or you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. For that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. But hear me. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn, cheek one turn, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks. If anyone takes what belongs to you, don't ask for it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Norma is not feeling well today, and I really appreciate Ken covering up or doing two services today, and I really appreciate the choir wing on a wing uh, doing what you had to do, and appreciate it. Well done. Thank you very much. I did forget something in the beginning. If you did not get a pledge card last Sunday, we have some, we just have a few left. And if you'll approach an usher after the service, they'll be glad to get you a pledge card. And if you want to bring one back, we'll take them anytime. Woe unto those who are rich, for they will be poor someday. Woe to those who laugh now because misery is coming their way. He didn't mean that we're all, just because we're laughing and enjoying life, that we're going to be miserable. What he's talking about is if we so concentrate on that which is frivolous, the important things will eat us alive. Daniel's one of my heroes. Daniel... The story that everybody knows about Daniel is Daniel in the lion's den, right? Everybody knows he refused to kneel down to the king and he was supposed to be put to death. They were going to hang him, but the king relented and said, if your God is good enough, he will save you. And they put him in the lion's den. And they, when they went back in the, in the uh, morning to see what was going on, one of the advisors of the king said there were two people in the den. But when they got there, there was just Daniel and the lions. And the lions were still hungry and Daniel was still alive. That's the good story. The thing we don't realize about the, the, the story of Daniel is that he spent over 20 years in the, in, in living with a king who was evil. And he maintained his relationship with God throughout. That's what got him put in the lion's den in the first place. He was ordered to bow down to the king because one of the advisors of the king thought, we'll get rid of Daniel because he won't bow down and the king will have to put him to death because that's the law. He refused to bow down. That's why he got thrown in. But can you imagine how many times in 20 to 25 years he was tempted to do something that God would not have wanted him to do, living in a house of evil where there was a harem, where there was all sorts of lascivious activities going on, where there was orgies and there was all sorts of stuff going on. And he was able to maintain his relationship with God because he concentrated not on the lion's den, but on the living of every day. We expect God to protect us when we're going to have a surgery and it's a major surgery. We pray for the surgeon's hands. We pray and we expect God to be there. 
But when we have a toothache or a hangnail, do we pray to God, be with me through this awful pain? No, we, we want God for all of the big things. We want God for all of the outstanding things. We don't really realize how often we need to stop and trust that he is with us in everyday stuff. The temptation to do evil, the temptation to surrender to evil, the temptation is always there. It's, it's just part of the way we live. The... the necessity of becoming angry driving on Highway 95 <laughs> is enough to put your faith to a test. Yes. No. We, we reserve our relationship, our immediate relationship, our constant relationship, we, we reserve it for the big deals. But you know what a big deal every day is? <clears throat> In my prayer, I always thank God for this day that he gave us because when he gave it to us, it was perfect. If we're willing to live it with him, it'll stay perfect. I don't mean you're not going to have suffering. I don't mean you're not going to have pain. I don't mean that everything's going to go so smooth you can't believe it, but you will be able to understand that the presence of God makes all things possible to accommodate. That's what Daniel learned. That's why Daniel's a hero of mine, is he didn't just ask God to help him in the, in the lion's den. He didn't even bother to ask for help in the lion's den. He knew it was there because he was confident in his everyday relationship with God. What a, what a wonderful thing to consider is that we have that kind of an everyday relationship with a God who loved us enough to surrender his son to make us whole. And that's what we celebrate with communion, the fact that God loved us enough to surrender his son for each one of us. Not because we're going to build monuments to Jesus, not because we're going to build a 900-foot cross or put a, put a statue on a mountain somewhere, but because we will live every day understanding his call for us to be who he would have us be. And then responding to that call. Most of the time Daniel didn't do a lot. Oh he interpreted dreams because he was a prophet. But most of the time he wasn't very busy. In another king's kingdom. Because he still lived in the kingdom of God. So our challenge is to not to wait for the big events. Not to wait for the things to go wrong before we talk to God but to remember that he's there every morning when we get up and he's there every night when we go to bed. He's even there when I'm watching Jeopardy and don't know the answer. <laughs> he's there through all things. It's what Daniel found out. It saved Daniel's life. But he didn't even ask to ask, have to ask for anything special of God. Because everything he did was special with God. Oh, it's a hard thing to remember because we're so busy. It's a hard thing to remember that God is always there because we're so busy doing what we think is important. But just remember, he isn't there for the catastrophic events. He isn't there just for hurricanes and tornadoes and flash floods and even monstrous fires. He's there for the toothaches and the hangnails. He's there for you. We share this meal today. We share this table because Christ shared it with his disciples. It wasn't, there was a Seder before Christ, which was a Jewish tradition. It was a supper they had. They hoped to celebrate the coming of the, of the promised one. But they saved a seat at their table for the one who had gone before. There was always a seat at the table for Elijah who had passed on. They didn't know who was coming next. 
we know who came. We know who came to be with us, to save us, to make us real and whole. And so we celebrate this day, not with tradition and not with an empty chair, but rather knowing full well that Christ is with us. Christ is always with us. Just as God was with Daniel, Christ is in our hearts if we will let him be. For he comes to us and never leaves, lest we turn our back on him. So let us pray this day that we would be one with him in all that we do. For Lord, it is our prayer that we would be one in the spirit, one in ministry together, one in service here in the kingdom where you called us to be. For your majesty reigns always in the creation that you have for us. We look to the west, to the east, and see mountains both ways. We see no monsters coming except to know that you are in charge and your power is great in us. So Lord, as we've gathered here this day, let this be, truly be the body and the blood of your son who gave himself up, that we might be made whole in his name. For truly we worship the fact that he gave himself, that he made himself human and sacrifice for me, for all. So hear us, Lord, as we lift our voices to say these words, knowing you will hear us well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's our daily and we those who cast it. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've come this day that we might share the bread and the cup. As you hold the bread, think that this is the body of Christ as you accept it. That he and you will make you whole. That he and you will give you power over your life to do that which he would have you to do. I would ask those who are going to assist to come forward at this time. And as they do, I'll remind you that as Jesus sat with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it. He gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you, broken that you might be made whole in me. And likewise, he took the cup and said, this is my blood, my life given. I give my life so that you can have it eternally. No one took his life. He gave it freely for each of us. Remember, as you prepare yourself to accept the body and the blood of Christ. Daniel prepared for the, the lion's den by living every day faithfully. He prepared himself for whatever it might be that was coming by preparing himself daily. So he doesn't expect us to do a crash course in love or a crash course in, in God's rules and regulations that he wants us to follow. He expects us to prepare ourselves daily. There is no cram course for salvation. It's a day-to-day, -day, ongoing, always encompassing task to learn to love as Christ has loved. Learn to be loved by the Christ who loves. Amen. Amen. We're tested every day, as Daniel was for years and years. We may never face the lion's den, but we will face decisions. Know that you can go to those places confident, trusting, in peace, because he loves you. Amen.